podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. We'll give everyone just another minute here and then we'll get the webinar started today. Okay, I think we're ready to get things kicked off. Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Identifying More Deaths with Serta Death. So the goal today is to have a conversation around uh, death data versus our full death audit solution, which is Serta Death. Learning about why there's a difference here, uh, we're going to share some insights into the industry uh, some data points that will help you better understand how you can identify the most deaths as quickly as possible, allowing you to minimize overpayments and saving time and resources along the way. The impact that this has on your pension plan is obviously great. It's why you uh, have death audit or death data to begin with. So we'll jump right in here to uh, who's going to be presenting to you today. So I, my name is Jeff Anderson. I am a new business development manager here at PBI. I work uh, directly with corporate and government clients across the country. I have worked in the uh, data industry uh, for quite some time, uh, working across a number of companies and very proud to uh, have made this transition to PBI in the past year. Uh, serving with yet another leader in the industry. So uh, we'll also have Lindsay Tate McDonald presenting to you today as well, who's a veteran at PBI. Many of you, uh, if you're a PBI clients, may have interacted with, uh, with Lindsay at some point in time and certainly an expert in our uh, area here. So, so PBI, we are going to talk about uh, death audit and death data. Uh, we do want to make sure that everyone does have the awareness that PBI does handle more than death audit services. So there are a variety of tasks associated with administering our pension fund, and we can be helpful in many of those uh, tasks. So location services, whether it's uh, helping with participant, uh, missing participant location processes, beneficiary research, we do have uncashed checks processes, um, we can conduct mailings. Uh, we also uh, deal in uh, and can help you with data cleansing processes that can certainly help with all of the various tasks involved. So let's jump right in and talk about uh, the industry challenge of identifying deaths in a timely stand, in a, in a timely manner. So it's probably not news to you that the Social Security Administration death master file is in decline. It has been in decline for a decade. There was a change made to legislation in 2011 that resulted in this decline. And we have continuously watched the decline happen and reacted to that over the past decade. So with that, services were developed such as the standard death data service that many of you may have today. With the standard death data services, you're getting obituary data that we know is a challenge. And you can see from this graphic, 
it's a growing challenge. So as deaths continue to increase, and obviously with the pandemic, that's been a challenge. We've seen a spike there, but as our population continues to expand and also age, this is not a challenge that's going to really flatten out. So there's a gap that's developing uh, and that continues to grow. As the Social Security Administration death master file is really no longer providing a uh, substantial result, what we have seen is the number of obituaries that need to be reviewed and looked at or where there are possible matches continues to grow and uh, on an annual basis or even on a monthly or weekly basis you're the one that is having to deal with this burden and that's really where the industry has been in the past decade and in the last few years uh, PBI really has been taking a lot of steps in the evolution of death audit to ensure that we're providing the best possible result. So we know from talking with our clients that have our standard death data solution where they're receiving scored obituary data and then they're having to make a determination. Is this a match to my file or is it not? And there are a lot of complications that come with that when we're talking about name changes, location changes, potential data errors, you know, be it in social security numbers, dates of birth, whatever the case may be. Uh, there is a lot of data to review and look at. And so knowing that that is a growing challenge, we implemented new processes over the last couple of years that have evolved into the solution that we call CERTIDA. The goal with CERTIDEATH is to return to the death audit result that was really in place prior to the, the decline of the Social Security Administration death master file. And we've done that. We've had the CERTIDEATH death audit solution in place uh, for enough time at this point and done enough file comparisons to see that when someone has the standard death data product or you know, product, and they're having to conduct this internal analysis to make a determination as to whether the obituary matches the record. We know that those challenges uh, have been difficult for clients to work through and to get a proper answer. We can see through file comparisons that on average, those that have the standard uh, data service are coming in around 70% of the total potential deaths that they could identify. We know that with CERTA death, you can identify 95% or, or we can identify 95%. Um, so the beauty of CERTA death is rather than having to do the work and take the time to do the obituary validation process, with CERTA death, we simply send you an answer. So our team is conducting that obituary review through the process and Lindsay is going to talk through a bit more around uh, the details of that process and what that looks like. But we certainly know from interacting with our clients and from what we've seen through file comparisons that the low end of the potential matches is not something that is being looked at with the level of scrutiny that we can apply to it to get the best possible answer. Uh, and in fact, quite often we learn it's not being looked at at all because the potential result is so low and the challenge is so great to get those answers. So that's one of the ways that, that CERTA death um, uh, comes around to providing that full comprehensive death audit view. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Lindsay and have her share more on the details of the search and death death audit solution. Thank you, Jeff. Um, and yes, my name is, again, Lindsay Tate McDonald. Um, I am the Director of Client Services here for PBI. Uh, so I help oversee our account management staff, which you, um, I'm sure, have worked on on a routinely basis uh, we help onboard clients, we help answer any questions or concerns 
um, with your standard service that you have now. Um, but what I really want to address today is uh, how do we, what is the difference between standard and certified with what you have now and what you could have? Um, and how do we go through this validation process? So we continually have uh, scrape on a daily basis over 26,000 different sources. Um, those sources include the uh, SSA, DMF, um, state sources when they are made available. So not uh, all states make their death information available. They're, some of those are considered closed record states where they don't share that information with anyone. Um, and then we use obituaries and death notices that are published through um, sources such as funeral homes and newspapers. Um, we use AI, uh, artificial intelligence, to help pull out relevant data um, that is in headers and text within that obituaries. Um, and we're looking at specific data elements such as um, name, date of birth, um, and locations to help assign uh, a score to an obituary. Um, and you get those, uh, you recognize those scorings of obituaries through high, medium, and low scored obits. So that's what you're using today through the standard service. We also use a scoring process internally on our operations team that looks to review those obituaries. We don't use high, medium, and low like you do. Uh, we use more of a numbered score basis. And what that helps us to do is really see uh, when we are looking at the data that a client provided to us and comparing it to data that we get from these sources, the variance in that data. And so what I mean by different variances is, um, and we can go through some examples. So you can have a name on file for a participant that not necessarily matches a name that is listed in an obituary. And some of those names variances could be nicknames, um, they could be, um, I can use my own family's example. Um, I have uncles that are named Robert, but they go by Bob, um, Charles, but they go by Chuck, <laughs> their nickname as we know. Um, I can also use my father as, in, and as a perfect example of this. So my dad was not a big fan of his, uh, first, his given first name. He liked his middle name better. So for the majority of his life, he went by his middle name. Now, depending on who uh, will write his obituary, my father's still living, but depending on if it's maybe my grandmother that writes his obituary or my mother, his spouse that writes his obituary, might change the name in which that uh, his name is displayed. Maybe my grandmother would get, list his given first name, but my mother would probably give his real middle name that he uses as his first name for his whole life. Um, so we can... Uh, look at that as a variance. Um, date of birth, there can be date of birth variances, such maybe um, on your files, whoever inputted that data into your files, because at some point somebody had to do that, take it from paper and put it into a system. Um, somebody could have fat fingered a, a digit, so it could be a day off, it could be a year off. Um, those things and challenges do occur. Um, and locations are usually a large variance. So Maybe the last known address that you have on file for a participant uh, may not necessarily be an address that your participant currently lives in or even where that obituary was published in. Maybe for the majority of his life, he lived in San Francisco, California, and then 10 years ago, he moved to Sacramento, California. Um, and also depending on who is publishing that obituary or who is writing, sorry, writing that obituary to him, whether it's a family member or again, a spouse, they may decide uh, to publish or write that obituary and publish that obituary in the area that he has lived in most of his life instead of the area that he currently passed away in. And so we take all of those variances and we give them number of differences. Um, and so much like how we score high, medium and lows, we have numbers that uh, go meet certain thresholds. Um, so data that's provided as exact matches, so exact matches on full name, on date of birth, on location, uh, will sky score very high. Um, and maybe that doesn't take an actual operations team to look at. We call those auto-validated obituaries. Um, and then we get into what you would consider maybe a medium category. And so this is really where we're taking a look at our internal operations team that reviews obituaries on a daily basis where they're really looking at in more detail. What are those variances? 
um, can we identify it as a nickname versus a, for, a full name? Um, if it's a location variance, well, how, how much off is that location? Um, is it five miles? Is it 15 miles? Is it 100 miles? Is it, is it a completely different state? Um, and we have internal tools that we can use to look up information based on a particip participant's SSN, where we may be able to say the data that you provide to us might not be uh, the data that provide is belongs to your participant. Uh, so we can come through commercial databases and which is all based off a participant social security number. Um, and we can see, is the date of birth slightly off? Um, is the name, have they used different names uh, throughout their adult lives? Have they lived in different locations? Um, and help score that way. And so me from just speaking on personal experience, I've worked for PBI for quite some time now. Um, and I remember, I think it was about five years ago where we had this concept of what we are, is known now as cert -a death But in the very beginning, we had this concept of uh, this idea of PBI reviewing these obituaries for our clients because we knew it was a painful point for clients to do this themselves. Um, not only is does it take a lot of time, it, it usually takes dedicated resources on your end, which involves training. Um, and that's very costly for your team. And so uh, as being a newer member, when we had first uh, thought of this idea, I was in charge of, of taking a small pool of our clients and testing this out for ourselves to see if this was something that we could offer to our clients. And so I remember painstakingly, uh, one of our clients was a very large client that uh, agreed for us to do this trial on. And I would, on a weekly basis, go and validate these obituaries, look through obituaries. Um, obviously, the high, the high validated, or sorry, high probability obituaries that you see today, those are kind of no-brainers. Those are hitting on multiple data points. So usually full name, date of birth, location. And it's very easy to go through those. Probability of those being correct was very high. Um, and then you had your medium, um, category to obituaries. Um, and usually there was just one data point off. And what I found when I was doing them was usually the location was off. So the name and the date of birth uh, were exact. And it, it usually happened with very common names. So if there was a John Smith uh, that lived in, let's say, Phoenix, Arizona with the date of birth, um, chances are there's also a John Smith that lives in San Francisco, California with the same date of birth. Um, so being able to utilize um, that additional information that we have access to to see an address history and see, okay, um, I I understand that he died here, but I also in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, but I also see that he did at some point live in San Francisco, California. And so those were um, still took more time than high validated obituaries, uh, but there was still a lot of really good hits in those medium categories. And now we get to our low scored obituaries. This is really, I feel like was the challenge from our clients as was speaking to clients on a daily basis about their process. This was where the biggest challenge was. Uh, oftentimes you found there was a very large increase in how many low probable obituaries are in that category. Reviewing those obituaries, there was very limited data um, oftentimes there was multiple data elements that were mismatched. Um, and we found in talking to our clients that, you know what, they just never even looked at low obituaries. They found it wasn't very useful, um, um, it wasn't useful in their time and their efforts spent to reviewing these obituaries in this category because we didn't, you didn't identify very many of yourselves. Um, and like I said, a lot of it because of those data uh, elements that and those variations. Well, we have a full team staff, like I said, that we look to uh, review those. We have other resources that we can pull in. We can use um, relative information that we can find on a participant based off their social security number that we pull that information in. We can see the name variations. We can see the location vari variances. And we find, find that we, we can identify a quite a bit more um, obituaries that score in that lower threshold um, that maybe your team is or is not looking at. Um, so kind of in summary, um, like I said, 
the real uh, idea behind Start to Death is we're really trying to save time that you're spending with, maybe it's a, a team of one, maybe it's a team of 10, depending on how large your subset is. Um, the resources and the training, right? Everybody needs to have, uh, when you get onboarded to a system, they need to know how to use our platforms. Um, so that takes time. What happens when one of your team members leave? Now you're starting the process again of retraining. Um, and time is money. So it's kind of how much time do you really want to be spending uh, looking at all of these this data on a weekly basis instead of uh, having a team like ours going and reviewing it and just giving you answers. So on this next slide, it's really a, a good side-by-side -side comparison from what you receive now uh, in standard to what CertiDeath can provide. And you can see the top three um, are very similar. You are getting Death Master uh, DMF SSA reported deaths to you. You are getting, oops, sorry, can we jump back one side? Thank you. But you are getting state death records. Um, you are, you do have access to the obituary database that, um, that we also utilize. So our obituaries that we scrape over are these 26,000 different sources. We house all that information internally. That is what we store. We go out ourselves, we gather it, we store it internally. You still have access to those obituaries. It's just how the information is utilized, the information that we can gather from different sources, um, that we can comb through those obituaries in a more efficient way. Um, now, some changes that you see when you get to CERTIDA um, is, like I said, you get clean reports, right? There's nothing for you to review or to validate on yourself. Um, you get weekly reports um, that are sent to you on Fridays that have your the participant information that you submitted the death match that we found um and then if it is found through an obituary you we provide you the link to uh to the obituary that we use to validate that um the research center access um you actually would not need this any longer through certain death so most of the time we find that uh through standard service you have to use the research center um, the Research Center helps fill those missing gaps in your information, um, such as address history, such as relative information, if you didn't have that on file already. Um, but, and it's an additional expense, right? So if you needed to look up an address, if you needed to look up on a relative, that's not something that comes in the cost of your standard service now. Those are something that you have to purchase credits ahead of time, and it's an additional charge every time you um, need to do a search on that. Um, and uh, descent, descendant identification. So we find that uh, because we are scraping uh, obits on a daily basis, that uh, you are, we are identifying deaths faster than you will in your standard service. So you are familiar now that we um, process your files over the weekend. You usually receive a report either Sundays or Monday mornings, um, and you work through that data throughout the week. And so we are not reporting any additional information, additional data to you within that given week, right? You're going to wait another week for us to reprocess your file and then give you another results file to review and uh, validate. But with CERTIDA, uh, our team is looking at those obituaries on a daily basis. We're pulling in that data on a daily basis. So if we receive an obituary on a Wednesday, that's going to be on your Friday report. Um, so you, we are identifying deaths uh, faster for you. So it could be within two days of a published obituary. It could be within four days. But in general, uh, you're receiving death information faster. Um, and then as Jeff just talked about before, we find on average that our clients um, can validate about 70% uh, of deaths through the standard service. And that's just analysis over our current clients. Um, and we did analysis of our uh, data that we do provide on sort of death. And we find that it's about 95%. Um, so we can go to the next slide, please. Um, and then some changes that you also see is it's a different platform. So the platform that you use now with standard service, um, there's a lot of different elements within that platform. Uh, not only are we giving you um, straight uh, SSA and DMF um, validated deaths, and you probably are familiar with category codes and how we even rank those deaths that we find based off of social, social security number. So you are familiar with category twos being an exact match of name, date of birth, um, name, sorry, name, date of birth, SSN combination. 
Uh, you also have different categories of threes and fours where that name might be slightly off. Uh, categories fives and sevens where it's usually an indicator that maybe there's something wrong with your uh, social security number. You do not have to review category codes any longer. We provide to you only validated deaths. So our team is not only validating obituaries and looking at those, but we are also going through all those different category codes that are associated with identifying a death through a social security number. Um, and we review those. We see if maybe you have your SSN that you provided us is a digit off or completely off. Um, we see that if there is name changes, is it a valid name change? Maybe you provided a um, SSN and name that was the actual beneficiary instead of the participant. We see that happen oftentimes. And so when, so like I said, this has a dedicated platform that you use. Uh, you can go in here on a weekly basis. You get the same type of automated email when your report is ready to view. Um, and you can simply click on the week uh, that pops up, like you can see in front of you here. Um, you can also do custom reporting. So if you don't want to just look at a week's worth of data, you can pull it through a complete date range or from the day that you started to current and see all of the all the deaths that we have reported to you. Um, and let's see, I think we're going to turn over to the next slide and we're going to go back over to Jeff and, and he's going to talk to you a little bit about Certa Census. Yeah, thanks, Lindsay. So um, I, I failed to mention at the beginning of the call, uh, feel free to chat in any questions that you have. I think we've got a couple come through potentially, but uh, if you have any questions, we can uh, take those right now. As you're uh, working on that, I do want to take a moment to introduce to you a new solution that we uh, just released, and it is called Certa Census. Goal of Certa Census is a proactive pension plan management system. Uh, these are not new tasks for us to accomplish. We've been, uh, this is a, a series of uh, tasks that we have conducted for clients on a project basis for years. So we're experts in uh, communicating with participants, locating lost participants, um, identifying decedents, finding beneficiaries. These are all projects. Uh, that we have done in the past, but the goal of Certa Census is to really put you in a position of uh, being as close as you can to a set it and forget it situation uh, where you're providing a, uh, a population to us and we are conducting activities on a continuous or on a timely basis to report back to you so that you remain in compliance along the way and you're not um, stuck in a cycle of uh, return mail stacking up on your desk and trying to figure out what's the next step you should take. Should I go call PBI and have a conversation about all the various location options and figure out pricing and all that good stuff? It's a, it's a set it and forget it solution so that we are conducting uh, these services for you and reporting back to you along the way so that you can feel great about your reporting and compliance of your pension. So, looks like we just have a couple of minutes left. Um, Lindsay, have we had any questions come through? Yes, I think we have time for just a question or two. Um, so one of our first questions we came, came in is, can you talk to false positives? How do you ensure individuals are deceased? Fa uh, repeat the question, please, false positives. Oh, I'm sorry, can you talk about false positives? How do you ensure that individuals are deceased? Sure, sure. Okay, great question, great question. So uh, very interesting. We actually conducted a study in the back half of 2020. So after we'd had the CERTA death system running for some time for hundreds of clients, um, we decided to look at our results. One of the questions that, that certainly came up early on with CERTA death was, well, how do I know that obituary review is as good as uh, a, a death master file social security number match? And um, incredibly enough, the result was uh, it, obituary review through PBI CERTA death is significantly better than the false positive results that come from the Social Security Administration death master file. In fact, you're 22 times more likely to get a false positive from the death master file. And if you think about it, it really makes a lot of sense. The death master file is simply a social security number matching. So it's a social security number against the social security number in your file. If there's a data error 
on either side, you, it could result in a false positive. Whereas with obituary review and the process that we're taking, our team is looking across multiple data points. They're using commercial data on the back end and resources through our proprietary database to ensure that when we send you an answer in a death audit, when we are telling you that John Doe is no longer alive and here's the obituary that matches, even though the data may not look perfect, your record versus what's in there, we've done our work and we've matched a lot of data points here to ensure that that's accurate. So CertiDeath actually has with 95% uh, coverage, so it's very comprehensive, but it's even more accurate. We're at 99.9% .9 or better accuracy on our obituary review because of the both artificial intelligence, the multiple data points, and the human expertise element that comes into play. Any other questions, Lindsay? Yeah, we're just about time. Uh, we have one minute left. Do you want to do one more question? or? Sure, go ahead. Maybe okay. I can give you a one word answer. <laughs> we are missing SSN and dates of birth on some of our participants. Does CertiDeath provide that information as well? So we can, and, and as you can see with, with CertiSense as part of what we can do are our, our, uh, unconfirmed uh, data updates. So, um, so that is something that we can do. Um, specific to CertiDeath, one very interesting element and why one of the reasons CertiDeath provides greater coverage than any other system out there is uh, with CertiDeath, we are continuously monitoring the commercial data that's happening. So while your file may have one name, one date of birth, uh, one uh, location in it, if any of those data points have changed through commercial data, we are seeing that through our, our database and through the advanced algorithms that are doing the death audit and surfacing these potential obituaries. So, so the end result means uh, we, if you have an incorrect address in your file that you haven't caught on to yet, we're monitoring that. The obituary may serve us under that, but we're also uh, monitoring the potentially updated and proper commercial data as well. So we're kind of covering all of it, and that's where the entire process of the artificial intelligence uh, surfacing the largest pool of results possible, and then the expert human review uh, to check against our resources um, enables you to have the most comprehensive and accurate death audit possible. And with that, I know we're up against the clock here, so uh, if uh, there are any questions, please feel free uh, to reach out uh, you can reach out to me directly. Uh, if I happen to not be your sales rep, then I can certainly uh, get you in contact with your sales rep. Uh, if there are other questions uh, or if you'd like to uh, learn more about CertiDeath or Certa Census, uh, please reach out and we'd be happy to share more. Thank you very much uh, for your business and thank you very much for your time today.